How to take a problem firearm that nobody wants and turn it into a reliable, fun to shoot firearm? Today on Max Headspace 9mm. A lot of the firearms I get, I get from friends or people I know. Uh, and they say, oh, this thing isn't reliable. It jams all the time. I'm frustrated. Give me, you know, a couple hundred bucks for it. And so I take it and I work on it. And most of the time it doesn't take very much at all to get that thing running very reliably and have a really nice firearm. Well, recently I got a kel PMR-30. Now, if you haven't heard of this, it's a pretty interesting gun. It has a lot of potential, if it can live up to that. It has a standard capacity flush mount 30 round magazine of 22 Magnum. And uh, that's a long case right there. Now, there might be a reason why a lot of firearms manufacturers haven't invented semi-automatic 22 Magnum pistols. Sometimes the road less traveled is less traveled for a reason. But if I can make this thing work reliably, it could be a really fun gun to have around. So let's see if we can figure out what's wrong with this and make it work. All right, we have a click with no ignition. So we're gonna keep it maintained in a downrange motion for a while. It could be that there's nothing in the chamber. This gun does not have a loaded chamber indicator, so I can't test that until I open it up. So I'm gonna look inside. There is nothing in the chamber. The problem is the gun did not feed a new round. Now there is something in the chamber, so we're going to have to look at that. Okay. What we have here is a stuck round. It isn't moving up the feed ramp. It's stuck on the end of the feed ramp. Okay. We have a similar problem here. Each of these is a different problem, basically. This one is the round is too high. It's actually winding up on top of the chamber. But by racking the slide, it went right in. And we're empty. All right, out of 30 rounds fired, we had three failures, if I don't miss my count. So, the problem here is it's asking an awful lot to engineer a firearm to feed a cartridge this long and skinny. It also has an extremely light reciprocating mass in this slide, which is made up of very little steel and a little bit of plastic. So it's probably got a very strong spring, but there's a lot of binding points on this case. There's a lot of things for it to hang up on in here. And one thing I noticed right away, I don't know if you can see this, but inside of the chamber, after just one magazine, there's all kinds of brass filings and brass powder all around inside of the chamber and on the bottom of the feed ramp. 
So what I'm getting out of that is that there's a tremendous amount of friction going on here. This, uh, this casing has to slide into that chamber across some hard edges. And it just doesn't have quite enough oomph to get it in the chamber reliably. The one time it closed before the round popped up, and that could be more than likely a magazine issue. You know, these magazines are made out of entirely plastic except for the spring. So it might need a little bit of graphite lubrication in the magazine. And it might need a little lubrication in the chamber. Now, most of the time when you buy a new firearm, you have to give it some grace. For the first 500 rounds or so, uh, it's not uncommon at all for a firearm to have a few hiccups. And sometimes people will try a gun out, put one or two mags through it, let it sit in the closet for a long time, and then sell it to somebody, and the next person doesn't realize it's not even broke in yet. And they go and try it, and it doesn't work right, and they think there's something wrong with it. This gun looks like it has very, very little use. And I suspect that it is still in the break-in stage. I doubt if this has 500 rounds through it. So, what I think the problem is, is friction. And since it's not a lot of fun shooting a whole mag and getting three stoppages, you can actually help make that friction go away for the first, you know, 500 rounds or so with some graphite. So let's reload this magazine with a little bit of graphite on the rounds and see if we make any difference at all. So for shooting today, I'm using uh, CCI Maxi Mag 22. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole box and I'm going to dump it inside of a paper cup. That's a lot of bullets right there, some big ones too. All right, and then now I went down to Home Depot and I picked up some of this dry graphite spray. Now this is a little different than the kind of graphite you put in locks. It, is, uh, it does have some uh, solvent in it to help it come out as a spray, but it is not uh, a wet, oily lubricant like gun oil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray this on these rounds. Make sure they're coated really good all the way down to the bottom. All right. Now I'm going to let them dry. This is something you can do at home in preparation for shooting. All we're trying to do is make sure that the break-in period is a little less boring with less stoppages. Because I fully expect after 500 rounds of shooting through this kel it's going to probably work just fine. Another thing we can do is polishing the feed ramp, which there really isn't much of one. It's just kind of a little shelf that the bullet slides across. But uh, I don't have a Dremel tool with me here, so we'll do what we can do here. And then we load the magazine. Okay, I didn't bore you with loading the magazine. Nobody wants to watch that. 30 rounds does take a while. It's not any harder than any other magazine, but it is a little tedious. So we have our graphite spray on the, on the rounds in here. So let's see if this does anything to improve our odds of getting good feeding. There's one. So one out of 30 instead of three out of 30, we're getting better. And I expect as we get closer and closer to that 500 round break-in period threshold, 
this thing will get to the point where it's actually pretty reliable. The one failure to feed that we had was as a result of the, uh, the bullet deadheading on the end of the feed ramp. So I might want to just ease that edge a little bit with a Dremel tool at home, but that's not too bad. One out of 30, that's a lot better. So if you ever get a firearm that doesn't work or doesn't work as well as you want to or isn't reliable when you expected it to be, take a little time and just kind of sort out the problems. Usually it's just something really simple like it hasn't been properly broken in, needs a little lubrication, needs a little polish here and there, can make a world of difference. So good luck. This is Max Headspace 9mm. Have a good one. Oh, and by the way, in case you're interested in learning more about the Keltec PMR30, after I've got my 500 round break-in period done, I'm going to do a review of this gun and show you what I think about it because I think it's got a pretty interesting personality and use. And I'll be able to tell if this thing really did get broken in and if it really solved all the problems. Be looking for that.